It's no secret that our right to vote is the foundation of our American democracy. But sometimes the process can feel overwhelming or unsafe. That's where Vote Without Fear comes in. Whether you're voting for the first time or the 10th time, this platform has everything you need to feel confident and informed. From where to vote, how to vote safely, and what to expect at the polls, voting is your voice. And with Vote Without Fear, you can use it without hesitation. Visit votewithoutfear.com today and take the first step towards secure, empowered voting. Remember, it's your vote, and you deserve to vote without fear. That's votewithoutfear.com. Welcome to It's Your Vote, a special series on a Fresh Story podcast all about voting. We'll be diving into everything you need to know to make your voice heard at the polls. From understanding voting rights to ensuring your vote is safe and secure, we're answering your most pressing questions about the entire process. Whether you're a first-time voter or just want to brush up on the details, this series is for you. So grab a seat, get comfortable, and let's get to today's question about voting. Hello, 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 sister. How are you today? I'm good. I like your sweater. Thank you. I have a giant American flag sweater on, which is apropos for this episode. She is living Ralph Lauren dreams on a beer budget. I love it. And I don't even like beer. So <laughs> makes your budget bigger though. My, you're not my, on my beer, for on sweaters. sweaters. Sweater and sweaters. <laughs> so, sister, one of the compliments that we've gotten as business owners and entrepreneurs from multiple people yes. in business is that we are very flexible in mm-hmm. our approach to how we grow the business and what we're working on in the business. If you had told us last year at this time, Q4 is going to be focused on starting a national conversation Mm -hmm. about voting safety and voter rights, we would have laughed in your face. Yes. However, I couldn't have a conversation about the upcoming election without hysterically crying. Right. Yeah, me too. So however, on August 7th of this year, our entire plan shifted. Um, We wanted to tell you a little bit about what happened and tell you about the feedback of that and what we've gotten. Because If anything at all, we are storytellers. We are people who love to share experiences so that other people feel less alone. That is what we do at Fresh Starts. So on August 7th, I posted an Instagram story Mm -hmm. to my personal Instagram account, The Digital Yenta. Many of you, I'm sure, follow me. I don't have a huge following over there, but, you know, maybe you're one of the 3,000. Lucky 3,000. And come join if you're not. Come join. I literally was, it was the morning. I think my kids were going to camp. I posted on Instagram stories and I said, just a friendly reminder, you don't have to tell anybody who you voted for, right? And I closed my Instagram. I went to take a shower. I came back and I had a few DMs from people who were asking me questions. And some of those questions, generally speaking, were, can I vote across party lines in a general presidential election? Mm -hmm. And is my vote private? Can somebody find out who I voted for? Specifically, one person asked, can my husband find out who I voted for? Yeah. So for anybody that doesn't know, Jenny, where do you live? I live in Edinburgh, Scotland. Jenny has moved over to Scotland. Uh, yes, she got married and I moved The love here. of her life. Mm-hmm. And so we meet on Zoom every morning about nine o'clock to start our work day. Yeah. We work on Zoom all day together. So I came to our morning meeting and I said, hey, before we begin work, let's just answer these questions from people. Yeah. What you said was, I, I have these questions coming in and I really want like a single link that I can send to people. Right. Um, that answers them. And I... Am the more techie sister, and I tend to be a little bit more. We're online in very different ways. I would say Olivia yeah. and I are all, like both online people in very different ways. And I kind of rolled my eyes and I was like, "You're being goofy. You're being two and a half years older than me right now. Of course, this is out there." And we both set about to googling the the sort of two questions that became three questions, which was, "Can I vote across party lines in a presidential election?" Will anyone know who I voted for? Can they find that out? And what information is public Mm -hmm. and when I vote? Right. So we said about Googling. 
Yeah, and nothing came up that was helpful in the right. way that this. A lot of things came up. Almost yes. too many things came up, right? Uh, yeah, and and and, and um, things that weren't necessarily super like uh, accessible. Like you know, like somebody for these moms that are reading it, like you just want to be able to like understand, get the information, get the answer to that question. You don't really need all the no other. <laughs> Back and forth. Of, yeah, exactly. So a lot of different things came up and nothing really answered our question. Like how, you know, yes, we are told in eighth grade, you go to vote and your vote is private information. You were how, told that in the eighth grade? Because I'll tell you. I don't you, know. Maybe it was, was fourth grade. It, no, I was told it in the third grade. We did presidential class presidential oh. elections. Oh. Listen, there were a lot of things going on in the third grade. I had a very creepy first uh, teacher in the third grade. Name we all Cummings. did. Yeah. yeah His name was Mr. Cummings. Mr. Cummings. Mr. Cummings says, yeah. He would. I don't know, draw on children's toes for some reason. It we was very weird. We'll circle back to that conversation we'll in another episode. And our parents were getting divorced when I was in yeah. the third grade. Yeah. I don't remember anything. And uh, we went to private schools all the way through. I went to NYU. We went to very good schools. I wasn't allowed to take history my last two years of high school because I had so many APs. I did not take a civics class. The last time, maybe Mr. Haneke taught me some stuff in the eighth grade. Shout out to Mr. Haneke. Yeah. Shout out to Wayne Haneke. I don't think that we talked about voting, though. No. And again, who remembers and my, that? My history class in high school was taught by a incredibly misogynistic football yeah. coach who hated me. Not a me. Tim Waltz kind of guy. Not a Tim Waltz. He was <laughs> as opposite as Tim Waltz as you can imagine. <laughs> Yeah. So we, you know, so while we, we assumed these things, we, we thought we knew these things, we really yep. did not want and to respond. we come respond. from a voting family. We come yeah. from like a very we've pro-voting We've always voted. Mm -hmm. You know, we've always been political, but we wanted mm -hmm. to make sure when we answered these questions, yeah. you know, any, any time, and we will say this too on the top of the show, anytime you DM us or email us a question, first of all, it's always confidential. Jenny and I take your confidence, you know, your questions with complete yeah. confidentiality. And secondly, we always do the research before we answer you. Always. You know, it's so funny. I haven't even told you this yet, Olivia. I went to go send you a tweet last night um, about something that happened uh, politically. And I was like, let me make sure that this link that this tweet is referencing is legit. And I actually filmed myself. I'm going to post it on my Instagram of what I do. Just the quick search that I do. Yeah. Of, is this new site legitimate? Because yep. it is so I that my like major wound in the world is that I will be misunderstood. And so it is so important to me that we do not put out false information and that we put out good researched information. And that's what we we attempt to do all the time. Right. So speaking of that, we spent pretty much all day on yes. August 7th putting together a blog post for Fresh Starts that had those four basic pieces of information. Number one, you can vote across party lines in a general presidential election, which means if you are a registered Republican, you can vote Democrat down the ballot. If you are a registered Democrat, you can vote Republican down the ballot. And for people who are listening who might be confused about why you would be registered as a party in some states like New York, where we grew yes. up, you have to register as a party if you want to vote in primary elections. Some states do not have that. As we found out, every state is very confusing yeah. with their and voting rules. Internationally, they're like, why? What is this right. party thing that you have to? So fight? that's number one. Number two is some information about your voter information might might be public, right? That might be where you live. It might be the party affiliation that you voted can be public information, mm -hmm. but who you voted for is not public information. And so we always like to say there is no registry. There's no data. There's no, no way. There's no record of who you voted for. Once you put that ballot in, it gets counted and there's no place that anybody after that point yeah. can find out. So if anybody tells you that they can find out who you voted for, they're straight up lying to you or yeah. they're trying to manipulate you. Yeah. And number four, you do not need to tell anybody who you voted for. It is your vote. As always, we took this bit of information that we found and we aggregated. We did not reinvent the wheel. And we sent it to a friend of mine, a longtime friend who's been in politics many, many years. Shout out to Jeff. And I said, can you just read this over? Make sure that it's correct. He said, this is all basic voting information. Yes. We, I put it on Twitter at the time uh, we published the blog post. At the time, I had about 10,000 Twitter followers. And you I were put, just under that 10,000. I was just under 10,000, yeah. <laughs> and um, I put it on Twitter as a Twitter thread. And the only thing I changed was I said, we're, we've been getting this question a lot. Can my husband find out who I voted for? Yeah. 
within minutes, and I mean minutes, I've never yeah. seen anything happen to, like this. It took off like a firestorm. Sophia Bush retweeted it, yeah. uh, Busy Phillips, Shannon Watts, and people started having big feelings about this. And so one, uh, well, we first of all, we wanted to share some of those big feelings yes. on this episode and the feedback because people have been very curious about that. Secondly, we wanted to say this is that we have had the amazing experience of having a, a wonderful publicist. We want to shout out to Grace CPR, mm -hmm. who has completely pivoted with us and, and supported us through this entire we keep uh, her on our toes. campaign. Yeah, we keep her on her toes. So thank you to Beth and her team. We've had wonderful media has, who has reached out to us, who mm -hmm. has interviewed us. We've been on NPR. We've been in L, uh, WAMC, Salon, so many, so many places, which has been amazing. And we're so grateful for that. And there has been some media that has really wanted to talk to us. And then they also really wanted to have uh, firsthand experiences of Active firsthand experiences. Yes. So firsthand experiences yes. of people currently, women, currently afraid to vote for X because of what their partner might do or say to them. Yeah. And so I just want to repeat that for anybody that's that needs to hear that again. There are some there were some media outlets, some uh, podcasts that reached out to us to feature and amplify this story, which we, we sh were so grateful for. But it was contingent on them talking to people and women who are currently living in these situations. Yeah. So if that makes you feel a little icky, it made us feel a little icky, too. Well, you know, as Olivia said, anybody that comes to us has our confidence. And we also recognize that if a person is not feeling safe voting for who they want to in their home, they're probably not going to be safe or feel safe having a phone call or an email interview or any record of that. It doesn't matter if you anonymize their stories because it these people will, first of all, that could bring danger to more women, right? <laughs> of, oh, it's mm -hmm. you or oh, it, like mm -hmm. just assuming that it's you. It's It's a really, really tricky thing. And the fact that they didn't want stories of people that have already survivors of it. I think was pretty upsetting too because it was like, well, those people will talk to you. You know, they're not in that home anymore. And we had hundreds and hundreds of accounts in all of those yeah. tweet threads. And there was uh, not just that Twitter thread went viral, but multiple Twitter threads about this yeah. have gone had, went viral since I started from mine started talking about this. And so it made us feel like you're not really hearing us that these people are in unsafe situations right. and. Our whole point of vote without fear is to help people vote without fear. If you are speaking up, even anonymously, even as they offer to use voice actors, you are still going to live in fear that your story will be found out about. So we wanted to, uh, you know, also say that the reaction that I got from sharing yeah. this was very interesting and scary and negative. And so if I'm getting this reaction, mm -hmm. I'm not married to somebody that is, you know, voting against the way that I would vote. And I'm just the one speaking about this. Imagine how these people currently living in these yeah. situations might fear speaking up about this. I imagine that what you got, which obviously, like, let's say this, very lucky. It was only tweets, right? right. Like, yep. One one hundredth of one one thousand yep. of a what a woman or a person who is in a domestic situation where they were legitimately afraid of voting against what their husband wanted them to vote for that that is so dangerous and we we went through these tweets and we tried to find stuff now i want to say this probably some of the worst stuff isn't even in what you're going to hear in a minute no. because Olivia has had to block so many people, which now with Twitter's new blocking policy, it's kind of insane, but Olivia has had to block so many people. Um, there were, there were so many threats. There were so many things I had to remove Twitter from my phone for a while because it makes me so anxious. If that is one one hundredth of what a woman would experience in her domestic situation, I will do anything to protect her from that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what we did is we got voice actors and went through all of these tweets and we split them up into a couple different categories. So the first thing you're going to hear is some of the reaction to me personally. These, by the way, are all tweets that are public information. 
These were all public accounts. These people all said these things on their own volition. You can go find these tweets. They're all still out there. So all we did is go find these tweets and we had voice actors read them, which is what the media was going to do anyway. So the first uh, group here, as we wanted to explain to you, is the attack that I personally got uh, as Olivia, not the message, but me, Olivia. Yes. And this is a couple of them that we wanted to share that were, again, not the worst, but some of some of the worst, um, that if I'm getting this attack, I want you to think about what a woman who is currently in this situation right. might be feeling or thinking also. So take a listen to these. Speak for yourself, you pathetic loser. I'm a white woman who doesn't let my husband tell me what to do about anything, much less tell me who to vote for. All the pretend victims and the docile minds are on your side of the aisle, not ours. I genuinely hate you subversive Jews and cannot wait until we eradicate. It will be very real this time. Stupid bitches like you shouldn't be allowed to vote or drive for that matter. You're encouraging people to be dishonest in a relationship. You're a degenerate cow. What are you afraid of? Do you really think many people fall for this load of crap? There is a secret ballot in this country. Leave it at that and stop lecturing other women that may be smarter than you. Bitch, no. You are a dumbass who is telling women to hide shit from their husbands. You are a shit person. Powerful. Scary. Yeah, it's it's so upsetting too, and and I know, I'm sure that people will feel sad for you. And I want to say, I'm like, okay. Olivia's okay. I'm fine. Oliv- Olivia's not in that domestic situation. You know, Olivia's not this person who's saying these things or doesn't know her. They're just being mean for the sake of being mean. So imagine the attacks that that people would get if that person knew you intimately, if they had you in their home, if they could keep you up at night, yeah. if they could make sure you didn't sleep, if they could make sure that they had their your child in their arms while they were screaming this at you. These people don't know Olivia. It's It rolls off her back. She's amazing right. like that. But um, though, because they're not intimate. Right. Imagine if it was intimate. Imagine what a woman would face. I just, it, it, it horrifies. Well, look, yeah. And maybe rewind mm-hmm. three minutes and listen back to these very strong. We wanted to get the vibrations of the voices. These are real things people are saying. And I yes. think sometimes we don't think about that because you're right. You're reading them, but hearing them is incredibly powerful. So the other next group of tweets that we wanted to share with you was the response from people about every time we say a woman can vote with her conscience and a woman's vote is her own and she doesn't need to tell anybody who she voted for man, that made a lot of people angry. Mm -hmm. And so we uh, aggregated a bunch of those tweets for you because I think it's interesting and important to hear what the reaction from the internet was when we say women have the right to vote. So listen up to those. I just grab my wife's and adult kids ballot and fill it out before she even sees it. What ballot? I suggest all men do this. Thank God for mail-in ballots. One can fill out the ballot for them and coerce their signature. After all, men are stronger and more violent. Yay, mail-in ballots. We should have never allowed women to vote because we get this nonsense from people who want to make a statement. That is that stupid. Repeal the 19th Amendment. There are many controlling men and many abusive marriages. Well, sure. And there are many controlling and hectoring women, but the question is about if someone else can see how you vote. That's a stunning level of ignorance. I refuse to believe it. That'd be a good argument against them voting at all. Far more acts of domestic violence are committed on women by men, so your comparison lacks validity. And by the way, just because you're unaware of a way of life doesn't mean it doesn't exist. The annals of DV are rife with women who are little better than prisoners. I'm aware of domestic violence. This conversation isn't about domestic violence, so stop lecturing me about it. I don't care how bad the DV is. A woman should still know that her vote is private. Unless she literally has brain damage. There are closed communities where info is controlled and limited. There are documented instances of men looking over the shoulders of their voting wives. Of men telling their wives it's their Christian duty to vote the same. I'd divorce my wife if she voted Democrat. In elections... This means that a wife should seek her husband's counsel and align her vote with his. 
This promotes unity in the family and ensures that the family voice is consistent with God's design for male leadership. It does not negate a woman's intelligence or insight, but rather upholds the God-ordained roles within marriage, where the husband bears the responsibility for the spiritual direction of the household. Yes, we need to repeal the 19th Amendment. That's why I make my wife do a mail-in ballot, so I can make sure she votes for Trump. She's not going to vote behind my back. My wife knows if she votes for Kami Mala Harris, she's going to take a trip down the stairs until she changes her mind. Naturally, she won't be testing it. Okay. Now, here's the interesting part. So, Braided yeah. in with all of those, those Braided comments. Braided in. Braided in with all of those. Disbelieving. Nobody asked for this. You don't need to say this. Right. Why do you think women are so stupid? All of these, braided in all of their were actual experiences of li- people that have lived this. Right. Stories so, of people that had experienced this firsthand. Right. So one of the big things we've seen come out of this campaign was that poll workers, yeah. canvassers, and yeah. phone bankers started speaking up. And thank God they did. Because mm-hmm. they really probably changed the course of history by just speaking up on Twitter. And I know that sounds ridiculous, but I mean it from the bottom of my heart. So poll workers, canvassers, and phone bankers started speaking up and said, this is not new. This has been happening. They have so much experience with dealing with especially women's vote getting silenced, women's ability to vote getting silenced. And so we put together a bunch of these stories that were, again, just directly from Twitter These are voice actors reading them. And I want you to close your eyes and listen to these stories because these are real things happening. And this is why we're so passionate about the work that we're doing at Vote Without Fear and the constant reminder that nobody can find out who you voted for and it is your vote. So take a listen to these. I actually have quite a few women in my daughter's Girl Scout troop in Tucson talking about how they're voting for Harris, but how they have argued with their husbands or haven't told them. At my local Walmart, someone put this message on a post-it and left it in the women's restroom. A MAGA in my community found it and posted about it in the local Facebook group. Tons of awful comments followed, mostly from men, all stemming from the exact same oppressive energy the post-it was written for in the first place. The message of your vote is private needs to be sounded every day and every corner because as much as it needs to be heard, it's also being stifled for the same reason. Even if you think someone may already know, tell them again and again. Be as unrelenting as the voice that made them surrender their choice in the first place. I knew someone who each would bring one of the kids into the ballot with them, and then the kids would report back to the other parent. It was horrifying. Happening in North Carolina, too, when I was phone canvassing. Women are whispering into the phone. One husband actually yanked the phone out of her hand. Sometimes the husbands don't allow them to vote. Sometimes they're only allowed if they vote the way the husband does. A lot of times it's because our faith says, when it actually says nothing of the sort. Please don't blame these women for their very real fear slash hesitation. Yesterday, While working a Michigan poll, I had to remind a husband wanting to stand over his wife as she filled her ballot that while she's there, she is not a spouse, but a voter who will have the guarantee of private vote enforced. And to also stay 10 feet away from the tabulator as she cast it. It's true. My stepdad would get absentee ballots and basically tell my mom how to vote. That's on her and she mostly agreed. But in these circles, there's a lot of policing of women's political views by men through ridicule and paternalism. Achilles' heel to mail in to some degree, in my opinion. Rural Northeastern Wisconsin County Fair experience. Old white guy aggressively approaches me, angrily and loudly announcing that, quote, no one cares about that woman stuff. Followed closely behind by a woman who quietly whispers to me, yes, we do. I have countless text messages that went to a woman's phone. But a man responded with so much hatred and proposed violence toward my volunteers. I wrote about this in Iowa in 2018. Men would answer the door, and when I asked for the woman whose name was on our Democratic list, the man would not let her come to the door, or say she wasn't home when I could clearly see she was. My abusive ex used to get mad and tell me that I needed to vote Republican since I made so much less money than him. I did not. 
but it's a very real thing, unfortunately. I was phone banking for Harris today, and a husband definitely hung up on me when I was calling for his wife. If she wants to hang up on me, that's fine. That's democracy, but nobody should have a say in her vote except for her. I gave a ride to a friend who doesn't drive because her husband refuses to help her vote. He actually destroyed her mail-in ballot last cycle. Talk to all of your friends. Ladies, please, let's help each other. As a poll worker, I have had to deal with husbands and fathers who want to join their wives or daughters in the voting booth to, quote, make sure they vote the right way, end quote. I canvassed for Obama. A woman opened the door and was listening to me. Her husband came up and slammed the door in my face. This is unfortunately not new. My mom did calls for Obama in 08. If the husband answered, they always said the same thing. My wife votes for who I tell her to vote. I just phone banked for Kamala in North Carolina this weekend, and a woman whispered to me, I can't talk about this because my family is around, but I'm going with the one that starts with H. Among registered suburban Pennsylvania voters I've door knocked this year, common to see husbands not letting their wife come to the door, not letting them speak, saying that he will decide for her or saying they will decide as a couple. Guess you missed the time Vance said men need to tell their women who to vote for. Or some other MAGA voices, quote-unquote, joking about women should have their voting rights revoked. Women have come too far to go back, and yes, this does happen. I saw an elderly woman vote for the first time this year because her husband has passed, and she is now allowed to vote because he isn't telling her she can't. Phone banking last night, and a woman answered her husband's phone and informed me that she was voting blue up and down the ballot and could only tell me this because her husband had just stepped out of the car and couldn't hear her. I canvassed for a House candidate in 2018 in California. A man answered the door, and when my canvassing partner and I asked for his wife, he said, I make the political decisions in this household. When I worked the polls, I frequently had men who insisted that their wife needed help filling out their ballot. They'd get really mad when I'd tell them that they had to leave. Some would refuse until I started listing the penalty for election interference. Yes, I door knocked in 2018 and was definitely blocked from talking to a few women by their husbands. Judging by the number of houses I've canvassed where men open the door and tell me there are no dem voters there, even though I know but don't tell them their adult kid or wife votes in dem primaries, there are a lot of people who can't be open about who they vote for. Okay, it's powerful, powerful stuff. Mm-hmm. It's it's so interesting even producing this episode, hearing it back, mm-hmm. having seen I've seen these tweets a million times, right? Yeah. But hearing it uh, is is really powerful. So before we end, we want to remind you. I want to say one thing before we. You're allowed to say one thing. Okay, your thank voice you. is important, <laughs> um, and uh, my voice is my own, and my vote is my own. I think that one of the messages, one of the things that we see a lot coming out of this campaign, is if you can't tell your partner who you're voting for, then you should leave. And, you know, Olivia and I aren't here to tell people to get divorced. Shocking. I know people think that we are, but we're not here to tell people that I'm very happily married and Olivia is a believer in love. Yep. So I just want to remind you that a woman on average thinks about divorce for two years before she actually goes and gets divorced. It takes an abused woman seven times to leave usually before she actually leaves. It is not simply that easy as being like, oh, my God, I'm not voting for this person this year and you are. I'm going to leave. When you look at the tweets about that and people say, why would you not leave if this person doesn't vote the way you want them to? You see other people going, breaking up a family over political beliefs. That's crazy. There's no right answer. There's no one answer. We can't start to judge people and judge people's situations. We can't start to know if maybe they did have aligned political beliefs until this election. Maybe the overturning of, I don't know, something really radicalized one partner one way or the other. Maybe they didn't know that their partner had such intense political beliefs until somebody ran in 2016. All of these things are unknown. Relationships are much bigger than one election year. And I'm not saying you should stay, and I'm not saying you shouldn't stay, and I'm not saying anything like that. I'm just saying that when we meet people and when we hear people's stories and when we hear messages that maybe aren't for us, rather than judging them, we need to meet them with empathy and curiosity. 
what would make somebody enter a relationship like this? What would make them stay? Why would they do that? What well, maybe they've had other life experiences that I never did that would compel them to stay in that in that relationship. So I think that that's a really important thing because mm-hmm. the message that you should not be taking away from this is they should leave. No. The message that we should be taking away from this is how do we empower voters? A hundred percent. And I also want to just add to that two quick things is that actually saying to somebody, why are they in that marriage? She should leave is in the opposite of what you should be saying and completely unsupportive. So, you know, and also the other thing we've been seeing a lot, too, is I would never marry somebody that didn't align with me politically. Friendly reminder that people's, uh, you know, character can change over time. Their belief system can change over time. If you marry somebody when you're 25 years old, they're not going to be the same person they are when they're 55 years old. And the political parties have changed. The world has changed. So before you start judging people, take a second, step back and take a breath and think about the support that you can give them instead. Yes. So speaking of support, uh, we have so much support for you over at votewithoutfear.com. Mm-hmm. We answer so many questions. It is yeah. nonpartisan. We answer questions like, what if I'm anxious about finding my polling location? Can I bring my kids to vote? What if I mess up my ballot? What do I what do? If, yeah. What if you send yeah. it in late? What yeah. if, you know, what if the uh, voting rules are confusing? Yeah. We have do links. I need an ID? Things like that. Exactly. We have so many links. We have so many resources. So go to votewithoutfear.com to support you so that you can get your voice heard and your ballot cast. And if you have any questions, you always know where to find us. Before we close this episode, we wanted to stop and say a special thank you to all the people who contributed their voices to this episode. At the top, I want to say a special thank you to our mom and dad who actually read some of the very angry tweets against me. I thought it was important that the world understands that I'm a person, we are all people, and those were my mom and dad reading the tweets angry, angry tweets about me. We also want to thank Josh and Lisa, Marissa, Melissa, Alex Frankel, Becky Schwartz, Bridget Cosgrove, Brooke Forey, Chelsea Long, Cheryl Searing, Christine Gritman. We want to thank Don Montgomery, Jake Sanders, Joseph Azam, Lynn Swayze, Matthew Searing, Meg St. Esprit, Molly Jensen, Nika Cowage, Rachel Bell, Richard Dador, Jackson Searing. And if there's anybody else who we somehow have missed and a couple of people asked for their names not to be contributed, we want to thank you. We want to thank you for listening to this episode. We find it to be very important and we're very excited to put it out. And we would really be appreciative if you would share this with somebody that you know, because we need to remember and talk about this, that all people, all Americans have their right to vote because it's their vote. Thank you for listening to today's show. We're here to support you and your right to vote because your voice matters. As always, the information shared in today's episode is not legal advice, but helpful resources we've gathered to guide you. For more details and to stay informed, head to votewithoutfear.com. And remember, it's your vote. Are you ready to use your vote? Whether it's your first time or you've done it before, Vote Without Fear is here to help you feel prepared and safe every step of the way. From understanding how to vote securely to knowing where your nearest polling location is, this platform has all of the information you need. Don't let uncertainty hold you back. Your voice matters. Head to votewithoutfear.com and make sure that you're ready to vote with confidence and peace of mind. Remember, it's your vote, and you deserve to vote without fear. That's votewithoutfear.com. Mm-hmm.